Hey there, Pixies and Peeps. Thanks for tuning in again to the Purple Pixie. And welcome, or welcome back, to the Fairy Garden, which is what I call my craft room. My goal is to make magical DIYs, but you may think they're mishaps. Either way, I invite you to let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're new here, I highly encourage you to join the Pixie Party by hitting subscribe and ringing my bell so you'll know every time I upload a video. Today I'm taking part in a collaboration called Bloom with Creativity, hosted by Devin at the Freckled Mom and Teresa with Teresa B. DIY. But we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Meanwhile, ah, it's springtime, meaning flowers are blooming all around us. Well, except in my yard, that is. Because even though I'm a pixie fairy, living in a fairy garden, I have a black thumb. I'm not kidding, y'all. I have killed cacti before. Several. You may be laughing, but my flowers aren't. It's true, and I've come to terms with the fact that the only thing I'll have to do with flowers is when I'm six feet under and pushing up daisies. But until that time comes, I'm just going to have to settle for making flowers rather than growing them. So let's jump right into project number one, the Plastic Spoon Sunflower. For those of you that know me, you already know that I love to turn trash into treasure. And I don't just mean flipping projects, I mean actual trash into treasure. And since I never throw parties or get-togethers anymore, I have a lot of these plastic utensils laying around that I'm just never going to use. So I'm going to turn them into a flower. To do that, I need an empty potted meat can, some paint, and a lot of hot glue. Now, you may recognize this homemade yellow chalk paint if you watched my shorts video. I'll leave the link to that down below in the description box, but it's basically just yellow acrylic paint at a one-to-one -one ratio with baking soda that I store in a microwavable SpaghettiOs container. And since chalk paint sticks to the plastic spoons better than acrylic paint, or even spray paint, that's what I highly recommend to make this project. So I started out with just a solid yellow, and then I mixed a little bit of the brown chalk paint to make it a little bit darker. And when I finished painting some spoons with that shade, I went in with just a little more brown and made one more shade just a little darker. Finally, once you get your petals painted, go ahead and paint the tin can in just a solid brown chalk paint. So you should end up with three shades of yellow and one brown center of the sunflower. And now taking the brown chalk paint again, I mix it with that darker yellow and go in and do a dry brushing effect on each petal. This is going to give it some dimension and depth. And then while those are drying, I'm going to use this plastic fork dipped in the yellow paint to make the little dots on the center of our sunflower. So now I have a ton of yellow plastic spoons, all painted, dry brushed, and dry. What am I going to do with them next? Well, you got to cut them down. And the easiest thing I found to use to do that is my pair of tin snips. These babies will cut through almost anything. I use them on my florals. I use them on dowels and popsicle sticks. They just cut so easily. And whenever you have issues with your hands like I do, the easier, the better. And like I say, life's too short to do things the hard way. So since we have three different shades of yellow, we need three different sizes. You'll see that I'm cutting one size down at the base of the spoon. That's going to be the outer layer. 
The longest spoons, which are also the brightest color yellow, are going to be in the back. And the middle shade is going to be, well, in the middle. Now I'm not going to lie to you and tell you this part was easy, because it did take a lot of hot glue to get each of those petals onto the can. And then I had to go back in and reinforce it with even more glue. But after the first round, it got a little easier as it went. For the second row of petals, I just used the leftovers that I had cut for the first row and staggered them in between a petal here and there. For the second row, I took the medium sized spoons and I staggered those as well in between the first and second row of petals. Then of course, as you see, I go in and reinforce the back with some more hot glue. It's filling out quite nicely already, I'd say. What do you think? If I had any leftover petals in between rows, I just went ahead and stuck them wherever they would fit. Once I was finished with the flower, I decided it needed some petals, but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep these on there or not. I used some plastic forks and of course my tin snips and cut the tines of the forks at different angles. And then I mixed some black chalk paint and some green chalk paint in order to make a darker color green. I gave each fork a good coating of the green chalk paint and then glued them on the last round of my sunflower. But honestly, I think this part was a bit of a mishap rather than magic and I don't think I'm going to leave them on there. You'll have to see the final reveal and let me know what you think, but here's a little sneak peek. And now more about this Bloom with Creativity collab. It's hosted by Devin over at the Freckled Mom and Teresa from Teresa B. DIY. Both their channel links and this playlist to this collab will be in my description box below. Teresa is happy, helpful, and a hero because she's a veteran and she posts at least weekly on her channel. And Devin, well, she's a fun, freckled, and fantastic. She's proof that gingers do have souls, and sweet ones at that. She also posts videos about three times a week. So I wanna say thank you to Devin and Teresa for inviting me to join in this collab. I've had a lot of fun. Now let's hurry into project number two, the coffee filter flowers. Now, as a crafter, it's pretty much a good rule of thumb to have a lot of florals on hand. However, if you're like me, and you're not that big into florals, and you're not that big on budget, you may find yourself in a pinch and need to make your own flowers from time to time. So I'm gonna show you how to do that here with some coffee filters and even some cupcake liners. For starters, I'm taking three coffee filters. I flattened them out and layered them on top of each other. And now I'm going to fold it three times. Once I've got them folded, I'm simply gonna take my scissors and snip around the edges in order to make a rounded shape. These are going to make the petals. It's kind of like making paper dolls back in the day. But of course, I'm too young to know anything about that. In fact, by the time I got around to playing with paper dolls, they were the kind that you dressed with paper, not cut out of paper. For the second layer of the flower, I'm gonna take three more coffee filters but this time I'm going to fold it four times and then cut out a rounded shape. Once they're all cut out, separate the layers and then stagger them 
so that the petals are not laying right on top of each other, they're laying in between each other. Use a little hot glue in the middle to hold them in place. Once they're all glued down, take your finger and push it down in the middle and then kind of pleat the sides together and scrunch it up in the bottom and hold it together with a little more hot glue. You could also use a stapler to hold it together, but I didn't have mine right in front of me so hot glue will work. Once you have a bit of hot glue in each pleat, just pinch it together and twist it a little bit in order to keep them together. Now pull apart your petals and layers and just fluff your flower out. Or you can skip this part if you plan on dyeing your flowers like I'm going to do. As you fluff out your flowers, try to separate the petals from each other. Then pull it down and sometimes you can even give it a little twist to make it go a different direction. For this next flower, I'm going to use four coffee filters instead of three. This does make it a little bit extra hard to cut because it's a little bit thicker. You only fold it in half three times and then we're going to draw our petals on. We start with drawing what looks like a tree trunk. And then we draw on our petals. Make sure when you cut these petals out that you snip it all the way to the side so they're not connected at the fold. And as you can tell by my artistic skills, they do not have to be perfect. And thank goodness for that, because though I may strive for perfection, I rarely achieve it. What about you? Did you ever play with paper dolls when you were younger? Leave me a comment down below and let's reminisce together. Or if you're too young to remember paper dolls or to have ever played with them, ask me a question down below about what they are and I'll be glad to tell you. Isn't that pretty already? Kind of looks like a snowflake. I remember making snowflake garland out of paper too. Now again, you just want to peel your layers apart and stagger them on top of each other. If you have any petals that were stuck together because you didn't cut all the way to the sides, like I did, just snip them apart with your fingers. Nobody's going to be able to tell. And once again, you gather in the middle and pleat them together. And voila, you have a beautiful hydrangea. Now once again, for this flower, we're going to use four coffee filters at a time. And this one, we're going to fold into fours. But instead of just rounding off the edges like we did on the previous ones, I'm going to kind of cut the petal a little long and cylindrical. And then, because I had trouble snipping through the thickness of the coffee filters, I opened it up and just snipped off some more in the middle. Now 
This one looks like a little ray of sunshine. I could have totally skipped the staggering step on this one because we're going to dye them separately. But I did want to show you what it would kind of look like once they were stacked together. And then I again repeated the step of four coffee filters, but this time I only folded it three times and cut out two petals instead of one. Y'all hear that beeping in the background? That means my ramen noodles are ready. So y'all just keep watching. I'm gonna go grab that and another glass of Kool-Aid and I'll be right back. Or you could always pause this video, go grab your own supper, meet me right back here and we can have dinner together. I kind of like that. And now you get to enjoy watching me struggle to get coffee filters apart. I think I ended up having to lick my fingers in order to do it. And thank goodness for once, I didn't have paint on my hands. Yep, there's the lick. Works every time. Doesn't it? No, apparently not. Oh, wait, I think I found a corner that I can peel apart, maybe? Yes! I got it! Whew, I'm telling y'all, sometimes the struggle is real. But it's always worth it, because look at how pretty those petals came out. And now for the really fun part. We get to dye our flowers and bake them. Yep, bake them in the oven. So before you get to dyeing and dipping, preheat your oven to 200 degrees. And now spritz your flowers, if you want to, that part is optional, with some water. The wetter the flowers are, the less dye they soak up. So you see this one is completely wet, but it's not really soaking up the water and the food coloring. And then I just set it aside on the cookie sheet that's going to go in the oven. That hydrangea flower was not previously soaked, so it really soaked up some color. And that color concoction, well, I had mixed so many colors trying to reach a purple that I liked that I ended up with a brown. And now I'm taking all of those separate pieces and just putting them in some yellow. When I put them in the oven, I'm going to separate them a little bit as they dry. And then you just bake them in the oven on a cookie sheet at 200 degrees. I like to leave the door open just a little bit, just in case I start smelling smoke. <laughs> but actually about every 20 minutes, I go and check on them and turn them and flip them so that they dry. And just look at how beautiful these came out. Now that these are all stacked, I'm just going to pull them together in the middle again, just like I did the rest of them, and kind of pleat them at the bottom to hold it together. You can either twist it, glue it, or staple it. Isn't that just beautiful? Now here comes the one with the cupcake liner. I happen to have these leftover gold foil cupcake liners and I'm going to do the same thing that I used to make the hydrangea flower out of coffee filters. Simply lay them out flat, fold them, and cut out your petals again. I made this flower for a previous DIY that I used in a video in a collaboration called Prints and Patterns, 
I'll leave the link to that video in the description box below. And if you happen to think that the four folded coffee filters were a little thick to cut, well, these foil cupcake liners aren't going to give you any slack either. But boy, do they come out pretty. Now of course I went ahead and made a lot more than what I just showed in the video, but look at how they all came out. I've got some leaves, I've got some hydrangeas, I've got roses, and now it's time to give them some stems. So for this yellow flower, I'm going to use a skewer stick from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to glue it down into those pleats so it's kind of hidden. I'll twist the skewer so it grabs all the hot glue. And now it's held in place. I'm going to take some of this floral tape and wrap the skewer so it looks like a stem. As I wrap the floral tape down the skewer, I'm going to add a few leaves to it to make it look more natural. However, these leaves just did not want to seem to work with me. They actually made it a little bit more difficult, so this is the only flower that I added leaves to. And then I wrapped the floral wire back up the skewer in order to give it more coverage. I tried to hot glue this one on beforehand, and the next one you'll even see me pleating it to try and give it some hmm, texture, I guess? But either way, I didn't like how either of them looked or how they worked out, so like I said, I didn't add any more leaves to the other flowers. Now I'm going to take my favorite one out of the bunch, and I'm using a leftover floral stem. Come on now, you know we all have them. We clip off the flowers, put them on a project, and then throw the stems away in a drawer for something else. Well, this happens to be that something else. I just love, love, love how all of these came out, and I can't wait for you to see them in the final reveal. But for now, let's move on to project number three, the big old bumblebee. I sure hope that like me, you're finished eating your dinner by now. Why? Because I'm going to be making a bug. A big old bumblebee bug, that is. And boy, does he come out so cute. Everybody loves bumblebees right now. Well, except me. And if you watch the bloopers at the end of this video, you'll see why. But for now, I'm going to try using this painter's tape, which I cut in half to make thinner strips, and my black acrylic paint marker, 
in hopes that I can get some good clean lines on a cute bumblebee stripe. And now I'm taking a chenille stem and some yellow gift wrap tissue paper. I'm going to bend the stem into the shape of the bumblebee wings. Cut the tissue paper out and then glue the tissue paper onto the chenille stems. Of course I'm going to knock the camera all around in order to make you dizzy. And then I'm going to have issues with my mini glue gun not wanting to give me any glue. But I happen to be out of large glue sticks, so my mini glue gun was the only one I could resort to. Like I said, that plastic spoon sunflower really did take a lot of hot glue. It completely depleted me. And this bumblebee nearly defeated me. But I was persistent, and in the end, as usual, I won the battle. In order to make his wings look a little more realistic, I just went in with a black ink pen and drew some veins. By the way, I got the idea for this bumblebee when I was on Indiana Jones' live show the other night. If you didn't see it, I'll post a link to the video down below and you've got to check it out. She made a bumblebee out of a light bulb and it came out so cute. And the craft that I made on her show actually involved my coffee filter flowers. Like I said, I'll leave the link down below. Give it a like and subscribe to her channel and tell her I sent you. Oh, and right here, you see me twirling together a black chenille stem and a yellow chenille stem in order to make his little legs. And now off comes the painter's tape and, well, no big surprise, there was a lot of bleed through and no straight lines. So I decided to try and freehand it to see if I could do it better without the tape. So how did it turn out? Well, you're just going to have to be patient to find out. For this big guy's head, I'm taking this huge bead that I've had in my stash for quite a while, and I'm going to paint that black with my acrylic paint marker as well. So now my OCD is messing with me. And I really need to clean up those paint lines from that painting tape fiasco. So I'm going to use this pointed tip felt swab, which is usually used for manicures and getting rid of unwanted nail polish. And I just wet it with a bit of water and go around and clean up my edges. Now, I could have used the tip of a paintbrush with a paper towel on it, but then again, if I had a paintbrush on hand, I wouldn't have used the paint marker and the painter's tape. And then I'm going to put the entire bumblebee together. I'll glue the big bead that I painted black onto his head, give him his little legs that I made out of the pipe cleaners, and some antennae also made out of the leftover pipe cleaner. After I finally add his wings and a little stinger to his butt, the last thing to do is draw on a face. And since this collaboration is hosted by Teresa B and the Freckled Mom, this little bumblebee is getting some freckles as well. Now real quick, I wanted to show you this little silicone mold that I got. It's made by Mod Podge and I think I got it at Michael's quite a few years ago. You're supposed to fill it with Mod Podge, but I use this ordinary Elmer's school glue. To paint these little boogers, I mean bumblebees, I'm going to put down a piece of painter's tape onto my working mat. I 
fold the ends down so that way it sticks on the bottom and the sticky side is facing up. Now I'm going to take my little bumblebees that I made in my Mod Podge mold. Look at them, aren't they cute? And I'm going to paint them with my black and yellow paint markers. And pretty much just like everything else in this video, it doesn't have to be perfect in order to be precious. I'm using a pair of tweezers to turn around the felt tip in my acrylic paint marker. Be careful whenever you're painting on top of another color because it will soak into the felt tip and it's a pain in the to get that paint off of there. Now to get this bumblebee to stand up in my floral arrangement, once again I'm going to turn to my old excess floral wires. After all, isn't this why I keep them hanging around? So I can reuse them on something else? Well, here I am, reusing them on something else. I'm gluing this floral stem into the hole on the bottom of that Easter egg. And then I'm just going to glue my other two bumblebees to the top of a couple of the floral wires. Now we need an arrangement to put our bumblebees in. So let's move on to project number four, blooms in a boot. Now, whether you believe it or not, I actually used to have a horse. But, since I've gotten a little older, I don't think I'll ever be riding again. The only way you'll find me on a horse is if zombies are chasing me. And that's only because the zombies can actually run faster than I can. So, in order to put my old cowboy or cowgirl boot to use, I'm going to use it as a base. I put this styrofoam filler into the boot and then I just start stuffing my flowers into it. Now don't blink because this project was so fast and easy that you're likely to miss it. The best part about this is I can still remove the flowers and wear the boot if I need to stomp some butt now and then. And here comes another fast and easy bonus project. My birthday blooms. I simply take an 8x10 frame and the glass from another 8x10 frame and I'm going to clean both sides of each glass really well because they've been sitting up in my stash for a while and it gets a little dusty here and there. I know, I know, that's all my fault because I don't dust, but whatever, here I am cleaning it finally. For my birthday last month, my daughter got me a gorgeous bouquet of flowers. They were just so pretty that I couldn't stand to throw them away, so while they were still in full bloom, I decided to press them. And now I'm finally going to frame them like I've been wanting to do. Some of the petals fell off here and there, but I was able to salvage some of them and stick them in the frame. For the other ones that I couldn't salvage, I simply butted them up against another flower to look like it was behind it. Then it was as simple as putting the other glass on the back of the frame. I gave that sheet of glass another good cleaning and it was all done. And I'm glad you got to see it here because it didn't even make it to the staging point. In fact, I dropped it, the frame came apart, and the petals went everywhere. But I think it sure was gorgeous for the whole five minutes it lasted. And now, for the final reveal. I 
I really do think I should remove those forks. Or at least trim them down a little. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. I need some input. Here's the project that I made on the live Indiana Jones show the other night. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below as well. This one was my absolute favorite out of all of them. It looks great next to my farmhouse tiered tray which holds some minis that I made for a collab hosted by Crafted by Cory. I'll leave the link to that video in the description box too. But this one really made me cry. I waited a month for those flowers to dry and press and they were sentimental to me because they were given to me by my daughter. So now it's time for you to tell me what you think about my projects. Were they magic or mishap? And while you're down there in the comment box, why not hit that subscribe button and become part of the pixie party? Then go ahead and ring my bell and make sure you hit all so you'll know every time I upload a video and you can come and join me back here in the fairy garden. And if you're already a member of the Pixie Party, you know it. Welcome back, and thank you so much for all of your friendship and support. You know you mean the world to me, and I wouldn't be here without you. And with all that being said, I'll leave you with this. If you're stuck in a cow pasture, be the daisy that everyone wants to smell. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please remember that all of me loves all of you.
Oh, are you serious? Ugh.